好。哎，你好，各位观众，大家好。非常感谢您今今天再度来到健康一加一哦。首先要请教林主任哦，您可否跟我们简单的来介绍一下免疫治疗的一个原理呢？免疫治疗最根本的原理就是正常的免疫的系统。针对于说我们的体内的产生的任何的肿瘤，它都有一些所谓毒杀的一些效果。那但是在我们的日常生活中，在微小的一个肿瘤产生的时候，我们在人体健康的时候，我们的免疫系统就会把这一些肿瘤细胞去把它清除掉。但是等到我们的身体比较差或年纪比较大的时候，免疫系统相对上比较薄弱的时候。那这些肿瘤就可以避开这一些免疫系统的这些清除的作用，那造成我们的肿瘤在我们体内生长。所以肺癌的部分也是相同的情况，在你的一个肺部肿瘤渐渐在生长的过程中，如果我们的免疫系统没有办法把它清除掉的时候，它就会产生出一些肺癌。那这个免疫系统的清除的效果，事实上就是后来研发出免疫治疗的这部分的一些根本。现在就想要了解，如果要进行免疫治疗之前呢、哦，肺癌患者跟医生要考虑到哪些因素呢？免疫治疗最常用的就是所谓的一些我们的表面的一些蛋白的一些分析。哦、如果说它有 p d o 1的这样子的表现，那它相对于我们的免疫治疗，它的效果就会比较好。所以我们在一个患者在治疗之前，我们可能会分析标靶治疗的效果好不好。也会验它相对的基因突变的位置。如果说它下面基因突变的位置它没有很明显的突变，那当然就不适合使用。那相同的，我们的免疫治疗，如果今天有产生比较大量的 PD L1 的这样子的一些标记的产生，那我们才能预估说它免疫治疗的效果是比较好的。现在就想要了解哦，因为大家都很期待免疫治疗，尤其是肺癌的患者哦。那哪一些类型的肺癌患者他其实可以接受免疫治疗呢？用他的肿瘤的简体去做一个免疫细胞的这个标志 p d r 1的这个蛋白，它如果表现是很高的，例如说超过五十 p e r c e n 以上，那它的治疗效果就会很好。那当然，你的这个所谓的蛋白的标志越高，那显示出你的所谓的免疫治疗的标。的这个效果相对上就会来得更好。我们是可以这样理解说，肺癌后期来接受免疫治疗的效果是最好的吗？在初期的病人能接受开刀手术当然是最好，没有办法用开刀来治疗的时候，我们才会考虑后续不管化疗、免疫治疗或者是标靶治疗。所以一般来讲，我们现在的免疫治疗都是使用在比较末期的，因为我们如果在初期，更好的治疗方式是开刀。免疫治疗是我们比较后线，因为没有办法完全开刀才去做的一个选择。我们要去验它的所谓的 p d o 1这一部分的一个蛋白的表现。那这样子的一个表现，事实上不是每个患者都会有很明显哦，可能只有大概两成到三成的病人，他的表现的这个百分比才会比较高。如果百分比高，他治疗的效果才会理想。如果不高，可能你治疗没什么特别的效果。好，那说到这个肺癌患者，他接受了免疫治疗、哦，竟然有一个案例就是五年没有再复发。那我们接下来听听看纽约大学朗格尼医学中心劳拉及艾萨克博尔马特癌症血液及肿瘤科主任 Dr. Guo Jing Wang， 他对于免疫治疗在肺癌的表现有什么样的见解？ Every one of us, including me, we have you know one or two cancer cells in our body that gets killed by the immune by the immune cells when they develop. And the reason a cancer cell develops is somehow they can evade the immune surveillance system and become a bump in your body or a nodule in your body. So immunotherapy is actually one of the most exciting clinical development and treatment for lung cancer patients. What they do is they there's a series of、uh, new agents、um, that can actually reactivate、um, your immune system so that your immune system can recognize the cancer cells and kill the can lung cancer cells. And the most、uh, common immunotherapy that's been approved、uh, for lung cancer patient is called PD-1 blockade or, or PD-1 inhibitors, PD-1 or PD-L1 antibodies. Almost all patients can potentially benefit from immuno immunotherapy.、Um, usually, what we do is in lung cancer is a very heterogeneous disease. What we do is we actually sequence the cancer to make sure that they don't have a mutation in what we call EGFR 
or ALK or RASC1. Um, and those patients are actually eligible for immunotherapy as a first line, uh, either as a single agent or in combination with uh, conventional chemotherapy. Even the EGFR, ALK uh, or RASC1 uh, mutated lung cancer patients, they, they still can get uh, immunotherapy, but has second or third line. In my professional career, I never thought that a patient with advanced lung cancer would have a cure. But in patients that's been treated immunotherapy, we have a subgroup of patients that actually have, uh, you know, uh, can hold the cancer in track for many years. In a very small subset of patients, we can actually cure the patients. I mean, obviously, this is still new. We're only three, four, five, six years out. But we have some patients that have really durable responses. It depends on the patient, right? Um, some patients, uh, immunotherapy doesn't work, and some patients it does. Uh, we still are still trying to study why that is. Um, but, you know, in some patients, it works really, really well. And unfortunately, we don't have the best uh, way to figure out which patient works best. And this is an area of very intense investigation right now. And I actually had a patient, um, you know, about five years out now that still, um, you know, is no longer taking the immunotherapy drug. I stopped him after two years and he still have no evidence of disease coming back. He took chemotherapy first and it worked for a little bit and then it didn't work anymore. And we put him onto immunotherapy. He took it for two years. When, when, when a patient has stage four lung cancer, meaning it has gone beyond the lungs to other organs, radiation usually doesn't work um, because there's too many places to give radiation to. So usually we just give systemic chemotherapy. And in this case, that patient have undergone two different types of treatment and, you know, and work for a little bit. And then he subsequently relapsed and progressed. So after trying two different types of chemotherapy, we decided to put him on to immunotherapy. So, so I think that's actually a, a change of practice now. So, so if, you, if your cancer cell, what they do right now is if your lung cancer has a high um, abundance of this protein called PDL1 on cell surface, and we can do a test to look at it, and if it's above a certain percentage, we actually prefer to give immunotherapy as first line, give it first as a single agent. We also combine it with conventional chemotherapy uh, in combination and give it front line to get more um, uh, 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 benefit for those patients. So the practice has changed quite a bit in the last uh, one to two years. PDL1 is not a perfect uh, biomarker, what we call uh, a, a, a signal in terms of what, who is going to work better. Uh, it's imperfect, and we're still looking for other biomarkers that can help us define those patients better. But for patients, the most exciting thing is combining with other immunotherapy agents that are in clinical development right now. I think PD-1 blockade is just the first of many other drugs that may be coming on onto uh, our arsenal to treat lung cancer patients. Um, so, so I think combining chemo com combining immunotherapy with chemotherapy is the first way. And combining immunotherapy with newer agents, um, that's also immunotherapy is going to be the second one. It's a very important, it's a very important weapon against the, uh, for the treatment of uh, lung cancer patients. Um, we just need to figure out, you know, at what point do we use this weapon, um, you know, and how we combine this uh, this drug with other drugs uh, to get the most benefit for the patients. You know, I think what we talk about is PD-1 antibodies, PD-L1 antibodies. Um, there's actually a lot of other drugs that we call immunotherapy drugs. And this is an area of really amazing and active research by major pharmaceutical companies. And combining these with PD-1 or PD-L1 blockade, it's going to be, um, you know, very exciting in the next three to five years or the next five to 10 years. Uh, at the end of the day, immunotherapy is the only way uh, once we really know how to use it and once we have all the the best drugs um, and can actually turn on the immune system, this is probably the only way you can cure a, a, a cancer patient. And we're starting to see that now.
。好，那接下来我们再继续回来请教一下林主任哦，就是我们知道免疫治疗，大家都很很想要说哦，接受这个免疫治疗可能对他们会带来新的希望。那另外还有一些人也想了解说，哎，到底免疫治疗有哪些副作用？那是不是有方法可以来做缓解呢？免疫治疗的副作用大部分都起因于我们正常人的一个免疫的反应，哈。当然，副作用是不是每个人都会产生？会产生什么样的副作用？因为每个人的一个免疫的情况不太一样，哈。我们自体免疫的情况在不同的情况下会有不一样的产生的副作用，哈。第一个，例如说，有些人可能他的会产生是皮肤痒、有红疹，或甚至有一些肠胃道的一些所谓免疫反应，例如说拉肚子。肚子不舒服，好，那更严重一点可能会肝脏发炎，就自体免疫的一个肝脏发炎的情况。那更严重的有可能是肺部的一个发炎反应，一开始都比较难预期它会产生怎么样的副作用，甚至有些人会引起甲状腺的机能亢进，有可能是甲状腺机能的低下，好，都大概都不太一样。那每个人可能会发生的情况或发生的时期都不太一样，当然会比较常发生是在前面使用的第一。一两次，或甚至到第三次，如果它在前期没有发生，之后产生的比例相对上会比较低一些。哦，那当然有没有什么预防的方式？事实上，嗯，没有什么特别的预防的方式，因为不见得每个人都会发生。哦，那我们只能在它发生的时候做一些应变的一些处理，因为是你自己免疫的一个。反应所造成的，所以有时候这个反应如果很强烈的时候，很多病人也会因为这样子而致死，所以这部分事实上要看病人使用的在过程中有没有发生过。这样子的一个免疫反应。好，那说到这个针对肺癌的这个免疫疗法哦，我听到就是有一叫免疫检查点的机制，那可以请教林主任哦，请问什么是免疫检查点的机制呢？这个就是我们刚才前面讲的哈，就是所谓 PDL1， 现在我们是最常去检测的。那当然，另外有一个叫 CTLA4， 这个也是一个检查点，它相对上也是有一个相对的药物可以来做使用。那当然，我们现在很多药物的发展都针对于 p d l 1的这样子的一个检查点去做检测，所以每个患者，我今天要使用免疫治疗之前，我们都希望先去做一个这个所谓的检查点的检测，如果有你在使用的时候，这样子的药物才会对它有帮忙。好的，好，那说到这个癌症的存活率哦，因为现在我们知道，在当下呢，就是已经我们的医疗技术啊，已经跟过去相比哦，比如说十年前的这个技术相比，是已经相差非常多了。所以可以请教一下主任哦，目前癌症的就是肺癌的存活率跟过去肺癌的存活率，您可以帮我们做一个比较吗？在二十年前没有什么特别的药物好使用的时候哦，大概。你今天如果是检查出来啊，没有很好的药物可以使用，属于是第三期、第四期的，当初又不能开刀，你大概病人的存活率都是在六个月以内。些化疗的药物出来之后，可以把这些没有办法开刀的三四期的患者的寿命延长到所谓差不多一年到一年半左右。那后来标靶治疗之后，可能病人就可以延长到两年到两年半。现在有些人他如果免疫治疗，甚至可以延长到三十个月的一个存活期。可能还有另外一个，例如说我们现在各国现在跟全世界都在发展的细胞免疫治疗，它如果针对这样子的病人，它更有好处的时候，那可能时间可以更长。我们现在免疫治疗是触发我们体内的免疫系统去重新去针对这个癌症去做一些毒杀的效果，所以有时候如果这个效果是很长期的。使用超过两年之后，这个病人大部分都会产生一一定的对于这个癌症的免疫效果，他可能终其一生，他的癌症都不会再复发。哇、wow, ，这真的是我想，对于肺癌的患者、癌症的患者，确实是一个非常好的消息哦。那接下来我们就想到，就是说很多人他其实对于免疫治疗在肺癌的治疗上面所取到的成效很振奋哦，但是对于可能产生的副作用其实也很关心。所以，我们接下来再来听听看罗纳德里跟 UCLA 加州大学洛杉矶分校医疗中心血液及肿瘤科医生 Dr. Deborah Wong， 听听看他的分析。In Chinese patients,、um, 
about a quarter to almost half of patients will have um, lung cancers that have a mutation in a specific gene, most commonly in the EGFR uh, gene. Our first treatment of choice is a targeted therapy. And that is because these treatments tend to be very well tolerated and they are specific to that specific gene mutation. Now going to the immune therapies, if a patient does not have a specific mutation, such as a mutation in EGFR, then, um, then immunotherapy plays an important role. Immune checkpoint inhibitors um, are a very um, unique um, type of medication used to treat many different cancers. In fact, these immunotherapies have really revolutionized uh, treatment, in particular uh, for patients with lung cancer. So the way that immune checkpoint inhibitors work is that our body is a really amazing organism. We have a very intricate system um, of uh, checks and balances. So in the setting where we have infection, um, our body turns on in, inflammatory uh, pathways in order to fight the infection. However, our body also needs to know how to turn off those, check, uh, those um, pathways. Otherwise, we develop over um, activation of the immune system that can lead to too much inflammation or autoimmune diseases. Um, a very simple way to think about immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are used for many different types of cancer, are that they are um, medications that help to turn on the immune system or um, block, turn off the checkpoints. Therefore, the immune system is turned on and we hope that that means that the immune system can now recognize the cancer as being foreign and then attack the cancer. So it's a way of harnessing our own body's uh, immune system, our own body's um, normal functions to fight cancer as the first treatment choice for patients with advanced lung cancer. Um, if the cancer uh, staining stains very strongly for immune, um, immune and immune um, protein, called PDL1, then the first choice may be to choose treatment with an immunotherapy by itself as an IV infusion. If patients have lower, if the tumor has a lower amount of staining for this immune marker PDL1, then the first treatment of choice would be a combination of chemotherapy with immune therapy. And um, what we know is that in such patients, adding immune therapy in the beginning as an earlier treatment option improves outcomes for patients compared to those who were treated with just chemotherapy alone. For patients who have stage three lung cancer, and generally that means that cancer is involving the lung, but also has spread to the regional lymph nodes, there is a role for immunotherapy as standard treatment compared to those who did not receive the immunotherapy. For patients who have advanced lung cancer, and one of the um, great uh, things about immunotherapies is that you're right, compared to chemotherapy, and even in some cases compared to targeted therapies, immune therapies have been shown to have less negative impacts on quality of life. Um, among the patients, uh, um, that have been treated with immunotherapy in my practice alone, that most patients have very few side effects to the immune therapies. It is very common for my patients to uh, be working full time or to um, be carrying on with their normal activities and merely come in once every few weeks for their IV infusion of immune therapy. After the infusion, they just return to their normal lives without any issues. So for the most part, side effects can be very minimal. However, um, the most common side effects from the immune therapy tend to be fatigue. Um, you can have some decreased appetite, um, perhaps some nausea, but usually it is not to the degree. Sometimes as a side effect of immune activation, uh, patients can de develop itching of the skin, um, itching of the eyes, 
And about a third of patients will develop um, either low thyroid or um, overactive thyroid, which sometimes requires medication treatment. Now, more side, serious side effects can also occur, although they occur at a much lower incidence compared to the side effects that I mentioned. Serious side effects can include overactivation of any organ of your body. The, one of the side effects that we are most concerned about is the side effect of uh, lung inflammation, something called pneumonitis, in which uh, the immune system is overactivated and can cause inflammation of the lungs. Sometimes in patients with who already have had radiation to the lungs, that can pose a serious issue. Uh, and so if patients with pneumonitis may present with worsening cough and shortness of breath. And so prompt recognition of this side effect is very important because we would need to initiate treatment to quell or calm down the immune system. We can have inflammation of any organ of the body potentially, including inflammation of the liver, which can cause hepatitis, inflammation of the colon, which can cause colitis or diarrhea, including bloody diarrhea, as well as inflammation of the pancreas called pancreatitis. Again, these uh, more serious, potentially life-threatening side effects are much less common. And for the most part, most patients who are on immune therapy enjoy excellent quality of life. 好，那接下来我们再来请教一下林主任。一旦罹患了肺癌哦，大部分的患者可能会有一些生活上的要求，有哪一些特别要注意的吗？我日常生活最主要就是营养哦，你今天有足够的体力，你才可以跑赢这个肿瘤细胞。所以，我们都希望患者他可以补充一些比较高量的一个蛋白质哦，让他的体力、他的营养会来得更好。我们要有免疫力，也要足够的营养哦，所以这个部分也是需要蛋白质的一些。所谓的帮忙，好，所以我们才会说，营养对肿瘤治疗的患者是最重要的。那今天在节目的最后了，可不可以请林主任来帮我们做一个结语呢？肺癌的这一部分，在我们在诊断的过程中，当然能早期发现、早期治疗会来的最好。所以你今天如果在一二期，我们会希望患者尽快的去做一个手术。那真的你遇到你诊断的时候已经是到三四期，没有办法再开刀去好好的治疗的时候。那我们会针对病人的一个身体的状况，还有他肿瘤的一些基因表现、蛋白的表现去做进一步的分析哈。所以这个是全世界现在都导入的所谓的精准治疗，针对每个患者去做个人化的一个治疗的计划。那当然，我们先决条件会先希望他去验一些基因突变的这一部分，标靶治疗的药对不这个患者的效果如何？如果说这个效果不好，我们会针对于所谓的 p d l 1这一部分的一个蛋白的表现去做它的一个免疫治疗的效果的评估，那才来做一个整体性的一个治疗的规划，让病人可以按照他的身体情况、他的年龄、他的营养状况去得到一个最好的一个治疗。好的，非常感谢林主任今天百忙之中抽空来接受我们的采访。林主任，谢谢你，我们的今天采访就到这里。免疫治疗给肺癌患者带来了希望。如果你还在跟肺癌战斗的朋友们，千万不要灰心，继续加油。祝福大家都能够保持健康。非常感谢您的收看，健康一加一，下周再见。